And this is the regular business meeting of the West Bath Board of Selectmen. It's Monday, January 8, 2018. Um, we've, uh, we've already uh, done the pledge of allegiance. We'll go right to the consent agenda. Do I hear? I move approval of the consent agenda. And do I hear a second? No, I second. And all, any discussion? All those in favor of adopting the consent agenda? Presented and that passes. Um, the uh, warrant and the school warrant is right here being passed around. I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next regular meeting of the West Bath Board of Selectmen is January 22nd, uh, right here in the town hall, which is on Monday. And, uh, do anybody want to? Slutman or Adam have a Slutman's comment? No. Mm -hmm. no. no. I have nothing to comment on. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't do any good anyway. <laughs> uh, any citizens' comments? Citizens' comments. No. Here we go. Any uh, committee work group reports? Um, we have uh, the investment committee and the mayor to make a recommendation to us for the, um, the next step in our investment program. So I'll turn the, uh, I'll turn the floor over to the investment committee. Okay, so we have a note, or I should say a CD matured to the end of December, and rather than try to cram it in the middle of the holiday week, um, we had a meeting today and looked at um, our possibility for investment of that block, and it's a hundred thousand. And our suggestions are um, we would have normally done more than one uh, suggestion for 18 months, but we don't have that many good opportunities to look at. Or 15 months, I should say. Yeah, 15 months. There was only four, none of them good. So we looked at 18 months and slightly shorter. So we have our first choice is Wells Fargo for 18 months for 1.9% interest for the 100,000. Our second choice is also Wells Fargo, but for 13 months uh, at 1.8% for the 100,000. So that's our recommendation. And then our next notes after that is April. So we'll be coming back to you in April. Okay. Continue our normal pattern of no matures. We give recommendations to reinvest unless we need a drawdown for a project for the town. Okay, so your Unless, recommendation is one more time. Um, Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, yep. 18 months for 1.9%. Yep. And Wells Fargo for 13 months for 1.8 percent. Okay. And both of those should be available. So if you vote on them today, I should be able to place them with um, our trust. And they're each 100,000, or if, if it's only one. We're only doing one note. I should say one CD for 100,000. Okay. So our first choice is the 18 month. If that's not available, we'll go to the second chart. I get it. I get it. Okay. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay. Any um before before you guys accept or reject it, there's some people in the room that maybe aren't following all this discussion. I know we have a new select person. Just to back up, we have something in the neighborhood of five hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the town money that was left over from uh, the the lawsuit over RSU-1 overcharging the town some years ago for some period of time that we won, the selectmen spent, um, some of the town spent some of that lawsuit money and then the most recent expenditure from the town, from the, this committee was a significant portion of the salt, new salt shed. Three, I think it was three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars came out of this fund, went to the new salt shed, towards the new salt shed. 
So that left us with this 500 and some thousand dollars. And our philosophy as a investment committee recommending to the selectmen, we don't make any decisions for the town. The selectmen decide, we recommend. Um, that we divide this up and have it spread over a period of maturity dates. So we will have in three months another hundred thousand dollars that matures and we then we'll decide what to do with it. We could go to the stock market at any time if we chose to. It's not our inclination to do that in this uncertain times. Even though the stock market did wonderful things in the last year, it's very oversold, very high right now. We're trying to make sure that we preserve the capital for the town in the future because we know in five years or so or four years to six years, somewhere in that time range, the town's going to have to buy a new fire truck. And the estimated price on that is maybe $600,000. It's our hope that this fund can really alleviate a lot of financing charges to the town when something like that comes. So we got one piece that's going to mature at 100000 we, uh, in, in three months, another hundred thousand, six months, another hundred thousand in nine months, and then there's a hundred and fifty thousand that will mature in twelve months. So we were, our idea would be to do this for fifteen months at this point in time, our recommendation. We looked at the choices, there were only five, none of them we liked. So we looked at eighteen months instead of fifteen months. So. That's why we're, we changed the schedule a little bit, and, and we had many to choose from, or a lot more to choose from in the 18 month, and higher interest rates. So that's the sort of the big picture of what's going on with this whole thing. And you have that recommendation in front of you, and I'll shut up. Thank you very much. <coughs> Not for shutting up. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we? Uh... I move. Um, that we accept the recommendation of the investment committee and authorize Adam Garland to, to make the necessary arrangements for the renewal of the seat. Do I hear a second? Are you saying that the first recommendation? Or? The, the, way, the way that it has worked is that if the first recommendation is not available, go to the second. then they go to the second. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any um, discussion? Any, dis any questions or discussion from the public, Steve? Just a quick comment, just to let you know. If when Adam goes tomorrow and neither one of them is available, mm -hmm. he'll let us know and we'll work with our trust broker to figure out what's available in the market. Like a week from now, the market will be completely different. Right. We'll get the sheet, we'll look at it, we'll come up with a recommendation, okay. and then come Thank back you. to you folks. And it may be a special meeting on your part, or we'll just wait until your next meeting to do it. But that's how it works. If something, if it doesn't work out, we just go back to square one and look at what's available <coughs> in time for the next meeting. To the Thank you. Anybody else? No? Adopting the, uh, the investment uh, plan as presented. And all those opposed. That passes, Carly. Thank you very much. So, you guys put a lot of work into this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What's next? Uh, marijuana moratorium. <coughs> Yeah, all, all the board does, all the board needs to do is, uh, based on the public hearing you guys just had, um, just decide whether or not you want to extend the moratorium um, as prepared by our attorney, Sally Dyke. And if you do and you vote on it, then uh, have a document ready for you to sign. Okay. Um, the, uh, yeah, hang on. 
just completed, we just held a public, required public hearing, um, which is necessary to extend the, uh, the uh, moratorium or not. Um, and now it's come forth um, for a vote. And do I hear a motion to adopt the moratorium as prepared and presented by the town attorney in Saladay? So moved. In a second. In a second. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? And all those opposed? The moratorium is passed and extended for another 180 days. Thank you. Next. Next on the list, uh, Harbor and Waterway Committee discussion. I believe, um, I believe we have, uh, hang on a Jim Williams. That'd be me. Okay, you you uh Joe and another committee member, Peter Francisco. Uh, okay. Well we we serve at your pleasure certainly and uh, we understood that you may have a few questions. We're having a uh, committee meeting Wednesday at 3, from about 3 to 4, mm -hmm. with a published agenda. And um, we understood that the <coughs> select persons had some questions or some things they'd like us to consider. Or and so, here we are. <laughs> okay. Discussion and meetings and so forth uh, about the new Oyster uh, LPA, so called. What are they? What's that stand for? Limited production purpose, purpose aquaculture, I guess. And uh, there was a proposal in the New Meadows for quite a large area near an existing oyster pile. And uh, there was a not a public hearing, but a public meeting, a scoping session, so-called, at the fire station. I think you were there, mm -hmm. Madeline. And uh, there was um, a lot of opposition to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was uh, uh, the, the applicant, or future applicant, spoke and uh, described what he was going to do. And this is what the purpose of a scoping session is, as I understand it. And uh, there was just a lot of public uh, concern and so forth surrounding uh, the uh, project he was um, proposing. Mm -hmm. So um, there's been a number of people I understand that have expressed interest in being on the Waterways and Highways Committee. And uh, I think you've got a letter? Yep, the selectmen have it in their packets. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I, I haven't got a letter. Steve Nitschman. No, this is from uh, this Adam, Adam Gowan received a letter uh, asking about being on the committee. This is from Steve Hinchman. Yeah. 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 So, um, and we're planning to have a meeting Wednesday just to discuss that. And I understand Adam is interested in some budget items also. You know, for the coming year. And we serve a sure pleasure. So. Yeah. Well, I, I sort of got personally. I sort of got wisps of. Them. Where you guys are coming from, I couldn't collect the story together until, fortunately, we sit down and talk. Um, well, we may be here a little prematurely because we, we really haven't had a formal meeting yet. We're having it Wednesday. And we were actually going to. I'm glad you told me. I didn't know. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I understood that you did know Joe. I specifically asked in the town if you had been notified. So well, my apologies. I didn't know. Okay. Well, my apologies. Okay. So this was the same night and day we discussed when we met a couple weeks ago. How how does the yeah. Waterways and Harbors Committee fall into the oyster fishery? The uh, state requires that the the municipality provides input into the applicant's um, process, if you will. At a public hearing? Uh, no, uh, actually, uh, the harbor master has to be consulted. If there's no harbor master, it's a municipal official. And uh, that's been happening. Now, the DMR talks to me, and the one that, that, that's in question that they've had problems with, I was never, I was never involved in it. The next, I have others that I talked to the DMR today, and I've already inspected these sites and have had no problems at all with anyone in the area. Mm -hmm. And this person went through the channels properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's primarily what the harbor master does. And perhaps the committee is going to do the same thing or something of that nature. But I, you know, before anything is issued, I'm supposed to be notified. Right. And I'm supposed to go inspect the site along with the person that needs the site. Mm -hmm. And this is basically what it amounts to. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone today with the DMR. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know some information, and I gave it to them, and they're very satisfied. But I, I haven't, I haven't. I haven't talked with Nelson Morass. He's the he's the one that's the problem. My my concern um, about the about the Harbor and Waterway Committee um, becoming involved in aquaculture is other than the, the question of of interference with with uh, navigation, um, we have we have a very functional committee that deals with marine resources and anything concerning aquaculture. It seems to me would be in their bailiwick rather than the harbors and waterways committee. That that any aquaculture thing having to do with shellfish. Would should, it seems to me, go to that committee rather than this one. Maybe I could speak to that a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, that, that very well may be true. The, um, my understanding is the marine resources deals with the flats and the tidal area. And the navigation and the um, aquaculture and the deeper water, with, where there's always water, that is dealt with by the waters and harvest committee. So now these some of these uh, aquaculture licenses are both. I think um, you know uh, Winter Point is that the right name? Mm -hmm. yeah. They have they have both. They have both that are floating crates, and they have some on the flats. Uh, they used to. I went to a nice presentation one day by Mr. Hennessy over here about that. So. Um, my, my take on it would be that the marine resources would deal with, you know, the tidal area and the water and harvest committee would deal with the tidal area. You know, that's where there's always water. But the state of Maine has jurisdiction over water, over um, the areas where the water always is. Yes, they do. The town doesn't have any jurisdiction at all. Well, the, the state of Maine, according to their own uh, rules, requires um, a sign-off from the town through the harbor master. Yeah. I generally sign it off if, if I know that it's not going to be a problem. And the people that apply for a permit, they have to go and talk to a budding people. The people that live near the, near the area or in this case, we had Bowdoin College, and he had to go talk to Bowdoin College and anyone else that could be affected by it. Right. And if it's okay, then I signed it off. Right. And that's kind of what I do along with my other jobs. 
the uh, right. Harbors and Waterways Committee, or yeah, committee. Um, in the description of um, essentially a job description from June 2004 and amended on June 14, 2006. Yeah. Um, purpose. The purpose of this ordinance is to establish a waterways and a harbors ordinance committee to provide for the just and orderly operation of marine activities on West Bath waterways. It is intended to promote safety, enjoyment, convenience, effective use, and control of mooring areas and public facilities pertinent there too. Well, navigation is the issue. You know, with these with these aquaculture sites, and that's the biggest issue that I heard at the scoping session, so-called, was that um, there was potential for this new licensee to have quite a lot of conflict with, um, you know, these um, floating crates and so forth. There was all kinds of talk about mooring fields and sailboats passing through and not being able to maneuver and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And that thing. In my in my estimation, but I mean, we serve at your pleasure, so so whatever you'd like us to be, I guess, you know that would that comes under the purview of the waters and habits committee. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the way it stands, the habit mass of not the committee has to certify and okay a new lease site. Right. Um, I'm the one that gets the right. paperwork for the DMR, and That's I way. talk to them, and then I go out and look at the site along with the person applying for it. But that's the way it's been for a long time. Uh, yeah, well, we and haven't also, done it for a long time. No, but that means but you okayed our site years ago. Right. But the Coast Guard is also involved as far as navigation goes and the channel and the right ways. Uh, they also always oversee these permits. So I'm not part, sure. Part of the, excuse me if I may interject right at that point. Sure. Uh, part of the process for the applicant, the uh, aquaculture applicant, is to get approval from the Army Corps of Engineers. Correct. Right. So also, also the Coast Guard's involved. And DMR. I, I wasn't aware the Coast Guard was involved. The Coast involved. Guard is involved, but they certainly were not. Because outside. of a channel. The right. Navigation right. piece. Navigation. Right. Well, right EPA is involved as well. Well, but, so yeah, everybody is involved. So I'm not sure. I'm just wondering why your your committee wanted to take on this aspect. Um, well, I'm not sure we do. Uh, there's just no. been a lot of uh, because been a lot of, uh, public input from the citizens of West Bath. And uh, there's a lot of people that are concerned about it. Right. And, they and I guess I, I'm one of those. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a wonderful resource we have. This as, the river. as members of the public, you're more than welcome. You're, you're encouraged to take part in, you know, these public kind of things. But to do so under the <coughs> umbrella of being a committee who represents the standing in on behalf of the selectmen who represent the rest of the town, that... See, a lot of the problems we've had, excuse me, sure. were people that live along the shore where this one in particular is, don't want to look at it. Yeah. And that's that's the reason. You can ask Pete. They don't want to look at it. They don't want to. Yeah. Well, it's it's more than that though, Joe, because you know, there used to be between my place and Linda Henderson's little cove up there, there used to be maybe three or four boats moored. Now, there's maybe 11. Some of them are huge. Yeah. Yeah. That Jeez. is a problem. Uh, and, and so now the, the, that little channel there is constricted down <clears throat> to, to very little. And, you know, that, that one boat came up there one day last summer, and I, I was uh, by the shore with my skiff, and, his weight picked up the skiff and dumped it six feet up into the rocks. Yeah. And, and so we, we, we do have potentially a problem there. And I think, uh, I, might, I might just say that this, this is going to probably become uh, more and more involved for the town because right now somewhere over east, I've, I've forgotten where, they've, they've gotten funding for a co-op to do um, 
seaweed aquaculture. And they, they have been in discussion with McCormick Spices, yep. well, something like that. And they want to buy seaweed, and they won't buy wild seaweed. They'll only buy cultured seaweed. And there isn't enough seaweed being grown in aquaculture farms in the state of Maine to meet their minimum. So that's one of the reasons why this co-op is formed, in order to ratchet that up. Yeah. Another thing that's happening is that they've got equipment that they've brought over from Japan now to uh, facilitate growing scallops. Yeah. And which, again, none of these things may work out or they may become very big. Uh, the third thing that I'm aware of that they're, that they're working on with Carter Knowles got so a how, grant. How, how, does this, how does this affect the town? Be, because you're going to be getting more and more applications for aquaculture, which are going to inevitably, as, as the case is uh, over here, that are going to conflict with people's moorings, uh, their means of navigation to and from their, their, uh, their moorings, uh, and just their use of that part of the of the river. I mean, if 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 that uh, Maris thing has been improved, it would be impossible for somebody at low tide to take their sailboat from. And there's a couple of them up there. They couldn't tack out of there. There wouldn't be enough rum uh, for them to do it. So that greatly inhibits their ability to to navigate. So I think we're going to see a growing number of these kinds of conflicts if, if in fact, this, this small-scale uh, muscle culture comes about, if the salt comes about, if the seaweed comes about. You know, these are, are, are three different uh, aquaculture things beyond the, the existing oyster leases that, that, that are out there now. My understanding is that um uh, DMR, the Coast Guard, the EPA, and the um, Army Corps of Engineers um, have very strict guidelines as to when an uh, aquaculture permit is granted. That's true, Madeline, of the standard lease and the and the experimental lease, but the uh, but but then the towns have a lot more control, and and one of the reasons why DMR created the LPAs was to be able to pass off some of the involvement on these LPAs. An LPA is only 400 square feet. Right. But a person can have four of them. Right. And you can have another family member with another four, and your neighbor with another four, and pretty soon it's, and you know, it, be, it starts becoming a problem. You know, and now it's easy for, I think, in a case where you have someone with one LPA, that one of those applications, I, I am acquainted with the, uh, the man, and I think that's all he he wants for the foreseeable future is and one that's LPA. Jordy Saint, Saint John is the one. That yeah, I mean. and he's he, that's not really that much of a problem. But when you start scaling this up, then it starts becoming a potential problem with existing people who you know have have. Uh, cottages or live there year round uh, and I think that you know at least some greater and in-depth discussion is probably needed uh, on, on particularly on the larger scale uh, projects which I'd say you know when you have 12 LPAs strung out along there that that starts to become in itself really but would we allow that well, I think we we do. The DMR, we might in some I, places. If I say no, right. then the DMR will have they'll have to do something and about it. You would say no on the basis of what the legal it's crowded the area. The legal um, right. The regulations require so navigation. much room for navigation. Right. Yeah. Because nothing. Right now, the one that's being complained about is the one that 
It has limited navigation, but you can still get through there. I'm a fisherman. I'm back and forth there almost every day. But if it got any worse, it would be a problem. And if I can help it, it won't get any worse. Right. But that's up to the committee if they want to have a committee. Well, that that um, the question of navigation seems to me appropriate for the harbor and waterway committee. Um, regulation of aquaculture um, seems to be an overreach, which is not to say that we wouldn't encourage any citizen of the town um, or, or a butter of a proposal to attend all the hearings. Those, they have those for a reason. If, if someone applies for it, the DMR gets a hold of me, and if I say no, right. then it probably will be no. Right. And I have to give them a reason, obviously. Right, and it can't be just because the person's been unpleasant. It has to be a... <laughs> I don't like him. And it, right. So that's right. Just, so, just, just out of curiosity, this meeting is when? Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, Three. like day or tomorrow? Sure. Has public notice been given? It's yes. posted on the website. It is? Mm -hmm. Okay. And is it posted as um, a West Bath committee? Meeting? Committee meeting, yep. Hmm. <coughs> but let me add, if I may, uh, we're not attempting to um, regulate aquaculture. Uh, that's that's not. I, I don't feel that's never been brought up. No. Uh, we're not attempting to do that at all. Our concern is that uh, you know navigation primarily. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I I mean I've looked at I just opened up the our charge here and the purpose of the committee is to provide for the just and orderly operation of marine activities on West Bath waterways. I mean to me that. That falls into the Water and Harvest Committee. It's intended to promote safety, enjoyment, convenience, effective use and control of mooring areas and public facilities pertinent thereto. So, but we serve at your pleasure. So it's really, it's what you would like as selectmen. I mean, we're appointed by you. Joe is appointed by you. Uh, we can, <laughs> we can be fired by you. I suppose we could say. So it's, it's what you would like us to do. Uh, there's been a lot of public concern. Uh, I, I, for one, would like to see more notice to, to people in the surrounding area. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know some of that's been done, but I think that some people have been surprised by, by this. More notice about what? Uh, about proposed uh, oyster farming. In front of their house or in front yeah, of by their up and by, down the, by the state's rules, they right. have to. all they abutters have right. to be. They have to. I, thought, I think I know for one right now, one person has That's no right. idea what's happening. They are the now, world. but they didn't before. Okay, so is that is that the fault of the applicant for failure to notify? I, I don't know. I, I mean, there not, is a you know, there right. is a process to do yeah. this. Yeah, well, I know on, on this one last summer there were a couple people that didn't get notified. And, well, that should void the applicant. You know, but, well, I know, but you know, that, that, that's, that's right. right. I should. Yeah. But uh, I think, you know, I, I'm, my thinking was potentially that the committee uh, could discuss these things, because it has no power for anything now, but it can discuss some of these issues and discuss it bring together some of the various uh, what do you say, stakeholders in the river, people that use it recreationally, people that, 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 that lobster people, that, 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 that cohogging out there all the time. And, and a lot of these things weren't taken into consideration at all uh, at, at that time. The LPA. Hmm? They weren't taken into consideration for the LPA? Well, it wasn't for the L. No, it wasn't but taken into consideration for the LPA. He's seeking a permit. I, I, I met right here with with DMR and, and that person last spring, and, and and they had no clue that anybody was cohogging there, and yet they were they were out there all winter uh, last year. Except I don't know. I think we froze up a little bit for a few minutes. They won't be doing it this year. No, but <laughs> 
there there are people who are who are normally co-hogging on the middle ground where he wants to lose? Well, I think now he's he's proposed to move out away from the middle grounds uh, somewhat. So he may be in deeper water than what they can reach. I don't know, how, how deep can they go with those bull rakes? Oh, it depends how strong you are. Uh, <laughs> I'd say 8 to 10 feet, but... About 10, it's about maximum. Yeah, he, he may be beyond I that now. I haven't seen any. I don't know that he cares out most there of the time. Bull rakes. The truth. So, so right. well, but DMR should, DMR will, will be concerned about whether or not that lease site conflicts with an already existing fishery. That's one of the I, I, th I think you're right, and I think you're right in theory on that. On the other hand, DMR is pushing hard. You know, if they could see a thousand oyster leases on the coast, they'd be happy. I, I mean, they're pushing aquaculture hard, and, and perhaps with some good reason. But I think that they're I think that they're ignoring some of the other considerations in favor of trying to increase the number of, of leases. I think they probably would be really careful about that because that's a that's an immediate lawsuit and they know it. I, I, I'm if sorry, they, Madeline, I, I don't hear they, very well. If they, if they ignore their own regulations, that's an immediate lawsuit and they know it. So and they're being sued now. And, and in fact, I'm trying to think, I'm racking my brain right now, but there was another, there's another situation somewhere along the coast here where uh, they have a potential, a, a, a potential problem in it. I don't know. I, Is that I, the Bagadus? Ron Castine. No, that's another one. That's been, that's been ongoing. I think there. This was a new place. Well, the middle ground is is the biggest concern right now. Right. And I don't know if they're going to reissue a permit to him. Or, you know, I haven't been contacted. And if I do, I'd recommend that that he moves. But that yeah, that's only me. Well, that's what I told him after the after the scoping session on in August that it was pretty clear that. Um, yeah, he was not in a good location. No, and he wasn't, and it wasn't, wasn't real friendly with the neighbors. There were some, there were some social issues. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, all right. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to have a meeting on Wednesday, right? Right. That's the plan right now. Okay. Unless we're dissolved tonight. Uh, I think we're prepared to do that. A, a, a side question, entirely different topic, but are you a full committee run members now? You're, this, the full, these three right here. Yeah, this is it now. So Bruce is no longer there, right? No. He uh, does not wish to be involved anymore. I've called him many times and never oh, got any. Or oh, maybe I should say he's not able to be involved anymore. Yeah, I, I talked to him about two months ago, and he he asked me to uh, let it, I guess, I don't know, he asked me to, to um, let Adam know that he did not want to do it anymore. Okay. And I think I forwarded it through I don't know, Jim or Joe, somebody. Yeah. <coughs> okay. well, didn't didn't so okay. what, what, maybe yeah. both. What role do you see the, this committee playing in, in this upcoming meeting? Well, uh, it's been it depends on who is at the meeting, of course. Uh, Steve Hinchman has expressed some interest. I'm not sure if you're gonna act on that tonight. Are you going to act on his request to be on the committee? We, I, I didn't have that included in your stuff. Yeah, it's not on the agenda. We, okay. we can't act on it. We can talk about it, though. Uh, but uh, Adam seemed to be interested in some budget items, and we were going to discuss. I, I didn't understand the budget part of it. The, the budget piece, I've, I forwarded you the, yeah. the budget information so that. Um, if the committee wanted to weigh in on some of the budget pieces, they're welcome to. Joe, as the harbor master, provides me with budget information every year and what he needs. Um, if the committee wanted to be a part of that conversation, then they could. Um, but the the harbor waterway budget is quite simple. So um, I think one of the things that where we're at is in, with the board of selectmen is that 
in the opera master and in the committee is seeing who you want to do what and how. So, I mean, traditionally the harbor master has been the one that's taken care of everything for the last handful of years. Um, so, maybe when we leave the room we can walk out with a clear defined roles. Yeah, and, and it seems like the way the state has got this structured that Joe is the, is the linchpin between harbor and waterways and marine resources in terms of right. approvals right at the moment. <laughs> Well, they're the one that contacts me. Yeah. Because I am the harbor master, and that's kind of a thing they do with all the harbor masters along the coast. Right. So if there's going to be anything you do with agriculture, they would. Are you on the Marine Resources Committee too? No. Would, uh, but you are a part of the uh, right. harbors and waterways. Well, I have been drafted. Drafted. <laughs> um, would. Well, that sounds pretty would it be modest. Helpful, <laughs> would, it be helpful, would it be helpful to you if, if you had input from a committee who was essentially well, we, we, got a, we got a fellow here that wants to run it. He wants to be the head of it. And I'll just be the harbor master. That's all. That's all I want to do is be the harbor master. Where I'm on the water all the time, that's kind of my thing. I mean, I'm, we don't need to take any action. Well, I'm not sure if you yeah, characterized that correctly, quite correctly, but that's fine. <laughs> um, my, um, about a year and a half ago, I appointed myself as the, uh, as the liaison between the board and the Marine Resources Committee. Um, and I'll, uh, unless you and Kathy have desires to do that, I, I <laughs> I, I will do that. I think you've got a good well. <laughs> well, I missed the last meeting. They, they were there for five minutes, and I was ten minutes late. <laughs> so, um, That'll teach you. <laughs> but I'll, I'll be here at three on Wednesday. Um, and um, see what see what we do. Um, so we can continue the discussion and. Um, and figure out where we want to go from here, and what what uh, what the purview should appropriately be if we want to continue the committee. Yeah, uh, we need to keep in mind, especially if, especially if the committee is going to play any role in this. The committee represent the selectman who represents the town is. Um, not only do not only do people who are opposed to furthering aquaculture have certain rights, but those same people who are furthering the aquaculture have rights as well. <coughs> Protected. That's why. That's why earlier I, um, it's very sensitive. I think what role the town plays, if any. In this, I don't have a lot of information to make any decision tonight. Um, I'd like to have more information. Are we? Uh, have we got a committee and we're looking for a crisis for it to resolve, or do we have a crisis and we need a committee for it to take a look at something? Well, I mean, I think we saw by last August in that meeting how passionate people were about what was happening on the river. And that's one thing, but can anything be done about it? It's a whole other right. Well, I guess that would be yet to be seen, partially. But uh, we do have, uh, the town does have input through the Harbor Master. And um, so there is an opportunity to provide input to DMR. And the New Battles, to me, is just such a valuable resource. We, you know, I heard it from many people uh, that they were just concerned about this pristine river and what's going to happen with their aquaculture. And they see 12 of these LPAs all of a sudden along the middle, the middle ground, and then they see this proposal for 5.6 acres out there. And uh, so it was, you know, it just was a lot of concern that expressed. And, and I'm not, I don't face the middle ground, I'm not over there. I have no, <laughs> I mean, I've been on the New Meadows all my life, 
so far, and I, I love it and all of that, but it, this isn't my, if you want to call it a battle, it isn't my hill to die for kind of thing. I mean, if, if at any time the Slutman wished me to step back, I'm happy to do that. No, we got you. We're not going to let you I'll go. I'll give you that letter of resignation immediately. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to. If that's what you'd like. What I'm, what I'm thinking, and ladies, please hear me out. Let me know what you think. We have a committee that is everybody's up to date, and, and it's a real committee. <clears throat> if we could task the committee for the time being with um, essentially a fact finding mission and report back to us with some um, some plausible scenario of what's going on. Is there a problem? If so, what is it? You know, sure. maybe some recommendations. Uh, a uh, take the pulse of the public sentiment. That sort of thing. Um, we, need, we need more information, I think, at this point. Before we make any sort of decision. Certainly before we make any major changes yeah. in the, in the, in the um, structure of the committees. Um, and would you be representing the town of West Bend? Yeah. Would be. Um, do you have any authority? No. You know, not any more authority than you normally would have. Right. You know. the, uh, the committee, as I understand it, is set up as five, full ten, five positions with two alternates. Yeah. And uh, it's just the three of us right now. Yeah, and then you got a quorum, so you're good to go. Barely. Yeah. Yeah. Only you. Mm. I don't live in town. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then so go, to, go to the committee, <laughs> take the temperature of the public, see what's going on, see if you can gain any information, and get back to us. And we'll we'll work with you. And sure. We'll so. make we'll meet, and then because you're going to be there. So yeah, that's absolutely. great. Absolutely. And uh, sure, you know, normally, normally we have a crisis, and then we appoint a committee to go address it and give them the marching orders. And yeah, but we uh, we're not getting the picture yet. I'm sure there's a picture out there. We just don't see it. Yeah. Well, I think primarily it was the concern over um, the aquaculture expansion so fast, so much, so quick. Yeah, I think that's the primary thing, and how it affect uh, people's uh, other uses of the river. Has, has anybody addressed these concerns to DMR? Oh yes, about 80 people did. That's what I'm thinking. At that scoping yeah. session. But you know, it was really interesting that um, they're, they seemed really unfazed by it, that this was all still going to happen after all this public input. No. That this lease out here, this huge lease was going to happen still. That was the feeling I got from the meeting, but maybe I was I mean, yeah. off base, but it was really kind of like we're going down this road and we're going to keep going. And uh, it, well, the road, the road is rocky. However, <laughs> I mean, the road is rocky. I like that. The road is a little rocky yeah. because it, because there are so many things that have to be met. And if if there is any one thing that is not right, then the lease has to be refused. So, so that was that was an informational session, really. Oh yes, it and, was. It was. It's what and it was. Scoping session. So clearly, the 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 potential lease uh, was very vehemently opposed by a number of people. Um, the people, the people from DNR heard that, and I believe uh, Mr. Morass also heard that. Mm. Whether or not that <laughs> results in any change, yeah. I don't. On his yeah, part, public but outrage the, in itself <clears throat> won't necessarily derail something. Like no, that. but not meeting the regulations does derail it. Absolutely. Well, I believe that a lot of people complaining about it might. No. have an issue for the DMR. According to, I've talked with them, according to them, it does give them a little, if they don't want it there. I mean, I can tell them I don't want it there because it adds a depth to navigation. And that would certainly help the people that live there. Yeah. Right. Can they ask you for your opinion yet? 
Yeah, maybe. Have they asked you for your opinion on this new site? Yeah, they yeah. did. I went to that meeting. Okay. They did. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's okay. move that up for the time being. Sure. And um, then, I don't know, you guys go, go to this meeting, maybe talk to some people, and then meet, and then come back and talk to us. It'd be, really, it'd be really good if we if there are other people that are interested in being on the committee. If you know, if they are included, that would be really good. If we could include them. So, because as far as I'm concerned, the more input, the better well, you know, from everybody. Yeah. I think we're not in a position to um, to appoint Mr. Hinchman uh, tonight, but it's a public meeting, so of course he would be eligible oh, to come. Okay. I mean, anyway. Anybody can come. If they're a resident of the town, or okay. if they're from the newspaper, or if they just wander in off the street, looking <laughs> we'll, for a warm place. It's yeah, a public okay. meeting. And we'll address this uh, next meeting. Would the board like to maybe set a date when to meet again to see their findings so that we make sure it happens in the near future? Well, we, we meet again, uh, what, on the 20th, what did I say? 22nd, 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 I believe. Yeah. Um, if you. <clears throat> Do you guys think that we should um, do we have anything in two weeks for us? I am uh, so far only the chairman pro tem, I guess it's the right term. So uh, I may not be actually the chairman. We'll have to see. I've heard some abstentions, but we'll see how the committee votes on Wednesday. <laughs> there, there's a hearing on the 22nd. There is a hearing in Yarmouth on LPAs oh, right. that DMR is holding. What time? Uh, and, and that's at 6 o'clock. Okay. And uh, so that might not be possible to... So perhaps we could move it ahead two weeks. That's fine. Mm -hmm. to the, that's the next regular meeting, isn't it? To yep. Yeah. All you have to do to get on the agenda, and it's better if you are on the agenda, yep. but it's not the end of the okay. world if you're not. Uh, but if you're not on the agenda, you have something that you might want us to act upon. We may not be able to act upon it because it's not on the agenda. So what's the night of that meeting? February 12th. All right, because I would like to go to that uh, meeting in, uh, okay. in uh, Yarmouth also. So thank and then you by, the, by the time you meet with us two weeks after that, you have a, you have a lot more bigger picture, better picture sure. than what you so we'll plan on being here February 12th. Okay. Yes. So the Wednesday, right? Wednesday meeting is? No, we're still going to meet, Joe. Okay. We're going to meet at 3, just as we had talked about. 3 o'clock. Right here. All right. Just as we had talked about. No, I'm glad ago. I found that. Okay. But well, you we were right here, Joe, two weeks ago. We talked about I wasn't aware. Of, I knew it was this one. Okay. But I wasn't aware of it. Wednesday uh -huh. also. Does the Board of Selectmen want to have... Um, the appointment papers for the next meeting, the other gentleman, or? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If somebody wants to serve on a committee, I'm not going to serve. Okay. Oh, we'll have it for you. <laughs> thank you, Adam. And thank you very much okay. for, for your, your service and your, your future service and your interest. It uh, means a lot. Uh, <laughs> in order for us to help you all the answers, we need <laughs> feedback. Well, I think public input's great, so thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, let's Where is my thing here. 2018 town office holiday schedule, which is in the back of all days. Um, So the, the holidays that are listed in here are pretty much mirror the state's <coughs> holidays, a handful of them. I think there's a couple of additional ones, so do you remember what they are? Is it the... Uh, well, we typically close half day on the, fiscal, the end of the fiscal year so that we can right, prepare the paperwork. Uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving is typically a half day in order to get to the bank early because they are closed and busy. Right, of course, before the long holiday. We don't typically close Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, but historically, many of the 
state offices are yeah. closed, so reasons to stay in that. I can understand closing Christmas Eve or half a day anyway, New Year's Eve. Or, I don't see any need to close that day, but that's just me. expensive way to give people a reward for hard work, to give them an extra holiday. Because the end of the fiscal year, the office may be closed, but that's not a holiday. <laughs> right, the, the end of the fiscal year, the office may close at noon, but that does not mean that right. the treasurer and the clerk are leaving at noon. Right. Um, they just need that time in order to hold them, tidy up. Exactly. Right. And they, um, the Thursday, Friday closing for Thanksgiving mirrors what happens with the school, um, our, our other employees, and um, I don't know. I should have gone into public service. I really should have. Yeah, I really don't think closing New Year's Eve. I think that it's hard enough to get down here to register cars and pay taxes and this is more the state gets 14 you don't want to be 16 so it's a little bit different a couple of them are just early closures for yeah for cause so. not 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 holidays at all um well in view of the fact that it is the last day of the year then i i to say, all right, let's, let's make it work on the 31st. The hold up for the for two days, days off of Thanksgiving. Yeah, I can live with all the rest of them. I just think that's an excessive summer. Uh, December 31st. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can have one. Yeah. yeah. So. So we'd be adopting the schedule as presented, with the exception of uh, December, 31st. December 31st would remain a work day. Is that, is that, a, motion? Is that a motion? I think that's a motion. Okay, that's a motion. Do I hear a second? I second that. Okay, discussion. Um, I would entertain that Monday being a like a noon or one. Close. You're talking about Christmas Eve? Uh, no, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Because, uh, what are you going to get to the liquor store? <laughs> 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 no, I, I would entertain a short day, but I'd, I'd prefer to see it open at some yeah, point yeah. that day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, I like a short day. You like a short day? I'm certainly not going to argue if the board wants to give the employees a short day. How do you feel about that? I'm fine with having them open the whole time. I don't think they need a short day. Oh, one more to say that one more time. I think that they need to be open the last day of the year. Okay. Okay, so we have a discussion, we have a short day, and then we have a full day. the first one and then mm -hmm. propose the second one. Yeah. You need to put on the amendment first. So are we if there's a second one. So are we uh, are we looking to approve this holiday schedule as written with the exception of removing Monday, December thirty first. That was the first motion. And then you're looking to amend the motion would you, you haven't voted on the motion, so why wouldn't you just, you could vote to defeat it, and then you could make a new motion based on your new recommendation. Mm -hmm. That's probably the easiest way. Okay. All right, the motion on the floor right now is 
The motion of the floor is to is to have is to accept the schedule as presented with the exception of Monday, December thirty first as a complete work day. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor and all those opposed. That one is defeated. And we have a so then the second motion would second be motion. that we accept the schedule as proposed with the exceptions of Monday, December 31st, 2018, being a shorter work day with the office closure at 2. Yeah. Okay. And a second. All right, so that is a short day, essentially, mm -hmm. right? And all those in favor, and all those opposed, that passes. So Carly, you got half a loaf, <laughs> just out of the no loaf. <coughs> so it'll be closing at 14 for 7th over 2, not 14 for 7th. Yes, sir. <coughs> Okay, any um, any other business? Just our executive session. Okay, yeah. we do have an executive session scheduled. Uh, do I hear a motion for it? A uh, request to enter into an executive session pursuant to Title I, Chapter 13, Section 405, Part 6A of the MRSA. Personal issue. All in favor. All in favor. We are in executive session. Uh, uh, 41. Uh, 